We're on. Are you ready? Right. Yeah, so, I'm ready. Um, I'm going to see if I can move in my studio. Okay. Water in there. So you're going to get a little tour of my house, I guess. So this is, this is part of our gallery. It looks like a really cool space. Yeah, it's it's nuts. It's um we've been living here for about ten years now. It's really cool. It's like thirty six thousand square feet, I think the whole thing uh -huh. is. Okay. Move this way. Okay. Go back to where the Wi Fi is, because that's a better better option. I'm just gonna have to count on the cat behaving, which is something. All right. We just got kind of like a little informal tour of your space while you were walking <laughs> there. And I'll edit, I'll edit that <laughs> you know, for sure. Yeah. But it was it was cool to see. Hmm. And yeah. so you said that you're so first of all, you're in Harlingen, right? I'm in Harlingen, Texas. So okay. it's um it's at the southern tip of Texas, right in between McAllen and Brownsville. And you so said you're in like a 1920s old hotel. Yes. So my husband and I in 2020 purchased the old Plaza Hotel downtown in Harlingen. And um we've been living here for about 10 years. We had our studio and gallery space and we were just renting and then our landlord passed and we uh, got first right to refusal um, to purchase the building. So mm -hmm. we were offered um, a great deal and we took it and now we have this like amazing building and studios and gallery space and everything that we needed. And that's something that's really hard to come by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I oh, imagine I that the real estate in Harlingen is a different story than Austin mm -hmm. and um, some of the bigger cities, but still, I think I feel like everywhere is is hard for people these days. So that's really um, it's really exciting and really cool that you have I that. Got, yeah, I got really lucky with the timing too because it was like it gave us something to do during the COVID lockdown when we were supposed to stay inside. You know, we were just like cleaning out the hotel and because it was packed full of stuff. So we were like, all right, we need these spaces for our artist studios because I'm an artist. My husband's also an artist. Mm -hmm. And so we have multiple different bays of the hotel and each bay is a different studio or a different kind of studio. And then one of the bays, the lobby of the hotel is a gallery. We um we do this thing called Harlingen Art Night. It's the last Friday of every month. Mm -hmm. And we're open from six to 10 and we do like open studios or sometimes we'll have shows where we show uh, local artists and um, we like to keep it about the community. So we actually don't take a percentage of any of the sales that we make at the um at the Plaza Hotel at Camino Studio. Yeah. Um, so artists make their full um, their full amount of money that they like they feel like they deserve, you know, which yeah. is nice. That's lovely and much needed, you know, for our I mean it's it's hard to like to put your stuff into a gallery and um, especially when you're just starting out and you're pricing, you know, depending on the kind of work you do, you might have to pay for framing as well. And then the gallery commissions are sometimes, you know, 40 to even 60%. Um, yeah. So opportunities like that for artists, I think are really great and um, kudos and how Thank super you. cool and fun that y'all are doing <laughs> that I didn't realize that um that your space was that extensive like because I've, I've we met once at mm -hmm. Grey Duck in Austin and then I followed your Instagram so you know I kind of have like a little taste but yeah. don't really know like that much about you or what you've been doing in the background um and the depth of it so I just that makes me really excited for you and like seeing other people doing it yeah <laughs> it's really good and, and hopeful and inspiring to, you know so 
Um, hey. Are you from Harlingen originally or? Um, my husband and I are both originally from the Chicago area. Okay. So he is from the South side and I'm from Plainfield Joliet. So um, I grew up in, um, in Plainfield, like the Chicago suburbs. And, um, and then my mom married my stepdad and he was in the air force. So I moved all over the place when I was a kid mm. and um, I grew up on the, on the West coast, on the East coast, mostly on the East coast. And I moved to Texas the day after I graduated high school and I moved to San Antonio and that's where I went to college at UTSA. Um, and I got my degree in art there and then I met my husband there when he was a master's student and I was getting my undergraduate degree. And um, years later, we met again, we reconnected and um, decided to move down here. He, he was like, hey, you like the beach? <laughs> and yeah. I was like, I do like the beach. He's like, I'm really close to the beach. You should come down and visit me and we can like go to the beach. And I was like, that sounds awesome. Um, so he got me. <laughs> I visited once and then I packed all my stuff. I was living in San Antonio with a friend of mine who um who blew glass and um it was just time for me to move on. So I, I was like, all right, let me go try this little town. I've never I had never heard of it. I had never been to it before. So when I went to visit, I was like really taken aback by the space. I was like, wow, you're we're in this like big hotel space and it's mm -hmm. um it's like a really cool alternative living space you know like it's it's all built out um by like I think the previous tenant who was a photographer so he had like a uh photography business out of here and um it's just it's really interesting yeah <laughs> It's been an interesting life for the past 10 years. Yeah. How long were you in San Antonio? Um, I was there from 2008 until 2014 or 2015. Oh, okay. That's a, a good while. So you were, I mean, I feel yeah. like of the Texas cities, t San Antonio is definitely like culturally closest to the Valley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For people not from Texas, that in, in Texas, that means the Rio Grande Valley. <laughs> and yeah what other people think of as the valley but um so it maybe I don't know was it um you you're used to like moving around and adapting and yeah already so um how how is how has it been living down uh, there? It was, it's it was hard at first yeah. um living away from a city because I'm such a city girl mm -hmm. um really enjoy a lot of people being around. I really enjoy a lot of commerce and, and just the vibe of the city. So it really, it took me a while to appreciate slowing down. Yeah. And, um, once I started to appreciate slowing down and the slower way of life and, uh, started really working in the studio and started working every day in the studio, it really got me started on, like my studio adventure, um, like making work for the past couple of years. And that really happened after I had my son. Um, he's almost seven now. Um, but I started weaving when I was pregnant with him because I had been, I was working actually on this piece right here that's uh -huh. behind me. <laughs> it's, um, it's enamel paint on wood. And um, I found out I was pregnant. So I was like, okay, I can't paint with enamels anymore. And I have to, I've got to figure something else out. So I started weaving and um, Grey Duck in Austin, where we met, showed some of my weavings, which was really fun mm -hmm. because I started out small and then I got a little bigger and then I go really big sometimes. And um, I do that. And then I tuft and... Um, embroider sometimes which is a lot of fun for me I like doing that in the winter time where I can slow down and um like curl up with a blanket and yeah do little movements of my hands 
<laughs> I've, I mean, I've done some embroidery as well. Um, not really in an artistic sense, but just sort of embellishing my clothing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But um, it does have that effect. And I've never tried like the tufting, uh, but I've been really, I like every now and then you will post a process video. Yeah. And I'm always very enamored with those. It just like, um, it seems like there's a physicality to it. I mean, all art, most art making, not all is, is a physical act, you know, but there's something about the top thing that kind of looks almost like a full body experience too, you know, yeah. um, and maybe it's just the scale that you're, you're working, but um, also kind of like, haven't I and again I haven't tried it so I don't know but I have an idea that it's like it re probably requires some strength to like go through the materials and do you think that's accurate or am I just like no it does it's um it's like a lot of muscle memory and like mm -hmm. uh I get a lot of calluses and everything from the work that I do because I do a lot of hand sewing on the edges of my tufted pieces so after I am holding um, my tufting guns about four pounds so it's it's like guiding a tufting gun that's about four pounds um up and down on a canvas so it is very physical and um, with my tools, it's industrial also because yeah. these are industrial tools. So it's it's very um, it's interesting to me how an industrial tool can create something so soft and um, like inviting, you know, with this industrial process that I have, where I'm sweating in the studio and yeah. um, and just making my body movements and painting each line it's like I'm painting again um, yeah. but I'm using, painting with yarn and painting with this tool that is loud and kind of like awkward you know mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's it's like I'm painting again um, lately I've been doing some painterly abstract pieces which have been a lot of fun so I'm really like letting loose and like mark making and that's been interesting how do you um because I would imagine that there's to you know at least to a certain degree you have to sort of know what your composition is and what colors you're using and all of that before you actually start so mm -hmm. it, how do you arrive at like what you're going to produce so I um I keep sketchbooks mm -hmm. and I make a lot of drawings. Um, I counted them out a couple of days ago. I have like somewhere in the teens of sketchbooks. So I've kept them since I was in high school, actually. I'm 34 now. Um, so I always keep designs in sketchbooks. So I go through them and I find like little abstractions or something that I'm like, oh, this would look really good as a like almost 3D piece, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I do a lot of drawings with the painterly style tufted pieces. It's more intuition. So it's, I'll start with like a color. I'll choose one color that I'm vibing with, like with my mood, with the day, like, a lot of the time it's a, it'll be like a, a different kind of pink or I'll start off with a blue or an orange. Those are the colors that I really like gravitate to or towards. And then I build my color palette around the one or the first color. So I have, um, I have these color relationships that are going on in my pieces where some of the colors like talk to other colors some of the colors are friends some of the colors do things with each other like some of the colors are just neighbors you know yeah. some of them really interact with each other and some of them are just like you know there to to do different things um so I I really have a good time picking out my colors I was actually working on a piece before um before our zoom meeting and I was 
going off of a sketch that I had in my sketchbook that I made like three days ago. So I, I fresh drawing, mm -hmm. haven't had a lot of time to think about it. I was like, I want to do this design. So I started it yesterday. And to be honest, like I, I went along with the colors that I had colored in my sketchbook because I'll, I'll take like my, um, my Prismacolor pencils and color in my designs in my sketchbook. So I have like a little bit of an idea of what color combinations can be or what I kind of want to focus on, maybe like what one color I want to stand out, you know, mm -hmm. for that piece. So I'll, I'll make drawings, um, but a lot of it's intuitive, especially with the color choices. It's very rare that I'll have like all of my colors picked out ahead of time. Um, it's really normal for me to just like choose maybe two or three colors, start with that, and then really like look at my piece and take a step back and um, kind of ask it like what it needs, you know, mm -hmm. like you, you have this relationship or I have my relationship with my work when I'm working on it, where we're like, we're the same, you know, we're one in the same, I'm making this thing, this thing is me. So I'm talking to it and it's talking to me. And then together we figure out what colors um, go where, you know, it just, it'll be like whatever vibrations need to be like in whatever places, whatever contrast needs to be in whatever places. I figure that out as I go a lot of the time. Yeah. And then it, they always end up being like very colorful and, um, and different. Each one is a little different than yeah. last So time. since you just shared a lot about the color and how you use that, let me ask you, uh, when I talked to you at Grey Duck, the work that was in that show was, um, I think you were calling them portals. Mm -hmm. And you can share as much or as little about this question as you like. You told me that it was based on grief that you had been experiencing. And, yes. um, and when you told me that, you know, it was like all the work in that show was very brightly colored. And later I was talking to someone else at the show and I, I told them what you had said that it was related to grief and they were that person in particular was just like oh like you know these colors wouldn't have communicated that to me mm -hmm. and I was like I, you know I think on a on a surface level like no we don't associate bright colors with grief but then after I spent a little time with it I was kind of feeling it too you know so would you mind talking a little bit, you know, again, as much or as little as you would like to share about that, but at least talking about kind of the color and how those things came together for you? Yeah, it's, um. so with the portals and the bursts, that's like the main work that I've been making for maybe two or three years. Mm -hmm. um, my father died in 2021. And um, within a few days, I decided to make this big portal. I was like, I need this escape um, to get out of this state of grief, out of my headspace. Like, this is just crazy. This is so weird because I didn't have a great relationship with my father. Mm -hmm. um, he stopped talking to me when I was 17. So it brought up a lot of, um, a lot of past feelings and a lot of like, grief from losing him the first time and um, losing him again so and for good this time you know yeah. he's he's not coming back so um the portals that was that was a way for me to escape and then it was just something where I could put my everything into it all of my energy went into this big piece I made it like enormous like um like the one of the portals at Grey Duck Gallery. When I say enormous, it's like maybe five, 60 inches or something by 47 or something around those dimensions. But um, just made this big portal. 
And so when I stood by it, I just wanted to be sucked into it and just, you know, go somewhere else. So then I started making it. The first portal was like a, a burst of color. Um, and I did use bright colors it's because I'm attracted to them. And I felt like they represented me. So I think that I was making portals and kind of self portraits, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense, with just the color, like just the color selections. It feels to me like each portal is a self portrait of like a time period where I'm making this thing, like a mindset, you know, it's a it's a mindset, it's a time period, it's the color choices, it's like what way the wind blows is is going to affect like what this is going to look like today, you know, if I like trip a little bit when I'm uh, holding on to my tufting gun, there might be a little wobble in a line or something, you know, that's everything is by chance, but on purpose, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the the bright colors, yeah, that's it's just what I'm attracted to. And even though they are about my grief of losing my father and having that open wound again, um, they promote joy. So I think I needed that kind of, of lovely peace, you know, of, of joy in my life when I was making them to like, kind of get my mind off of, you know, my dad. Yeah. So that was, that started in 2021. I think I've made 10 big portals and all of them are different. Um, the most recent ones, I was showing at Wrong Gallery in Marfa, Texas. And um, they, they're beautiful. They're like big, there's four quadrants and then there's a center portal part that like will draw you in it's it's kind of like reminiscent of the female body I think like um I kind of make it curvy and in the proportions of a female body almost but yeah. it's just like really big and really abstracted yeah um, so I have a lot of fun with that it's but it's about escaping you know because I have I have these dreams of the big city but I live in a small town you know so yeah, I get to sometimes I get to get out and go to a big city like we go to Chicago or like I worked in New York for two years um, on different projects like uh, it's it's fun to pretend with my work like pretend that I can go somewhere else with, just by like looking or by being around this like colorful like vibrating, vibrant piece of artwork, you know? Yeah. There was a lot in there and I had like so many things that I wanted to follow up on. So I have to figure out like what is, makes the most sense. But first I yeah. will say, thank you for sharing that. And, and I'm very sorry to hear about your father. I feel like grief, whether it's specifically about the loss of a person through through death or um disconnection or whatever it is or I mean there's so many um things and ways that we grieve that we don't always attribute to grief like grieving the world and the state of the world and grieving like the life we imagined for ourselves that may not have quite turned out the way we wanted it to or like you know whatever it is like there's there's it's something that's just like a very basic human emotion that plays out in a lot of ways and that we experience over and over and over. It's just part of life. And so I think that um, you sharing and willingly talking about that is um, has potential to be really helpful to people. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Um, The first thing that came to mind when you were talking about the colors, we'll just continue on that thread. Mm -hmm. um, and feeling like that's that's like who you are. Mm -hmm. um, when I f first started making art again, 
after like a 20 year break, like I went to art school, Wow. kind of had a little um, fallout with art and then <laughs> went into publishing for like 25 years. And then all of a sudden was like, oh, wait, I actually really love art and I love making art. And so um, it just sort of started up accidentally. But one of the first things that I I made um, like 2016 was just like this little drawing of um, I was calling it a vortex and for a while mm -hmm. I was painting and drawing like vortex stuff you know which is yeah. the same as a portal and they were absolutely extremely colorful and I found too that like while both while I was working on it and then when I would you know either step away or when it was finished, I'm looking at it, they often had kind of like an optical, sorry, there was a fly that just landed on my hand, uh, like an optical effect that created kind of like, um, I mean, not purely like op art, because op art actually, to me, always is a little headache inducing, but it like creates a sense of, of movement. Um, and that in itself, felt like sort of an opening of a vortex. It was just like, it was a very interesting experience for me as the person creating it. And I can't speak to what other people experience obviously when they have looked at them, but um, yeah. do you feel like, have you had any kind of similar experiences with um, almost feeling like you're inside of it because oh, absolutely. colors and the opticals like kind of start coming around you? Yeah, and the closer I get to it too, the it's like I'll I'll feel the colors vibrating on each other or vibrating mm. off each other and they like vibrate onto me. Right. And so I have like this relationship with the the pieces when I'm around them. Like they're very visually pleasing to me. Yeah. Um and they're also like they're for my soul too. It's like right. this this like soul connection with these colors and these color combinations it's for that it's so that I can eat here you know mm -hmm. so that I can be full and happy in my soul so I hope that like that's how I feel about them so I hope that other people feel kind of like something like that maybe yeah um, <laughs> maybe not a full like this is me moment but hopefully when people see my work they can relate to it because it's so abstracted and it's um it's about emotion and it's about moments and in time you know it's something that everybody can relate to yeah I mean I think that's part of the um appeal and maybe also part of the turnoff for some people of pure abstraction is that yeah. it it leaves it completely up to the the viewer and whatever they're bringing to the table you know i mean it's all it's always about like the filters that people have like even if it's representational very realistic art like people come with their preconceived ideas and where wherever they happen to be in life at the moment but abstraction strips out all of those other symbolic cues you know so I get that yeah yeah and I love I love the way that you you said that in terms of like it's coming it's it's your soul like coming through like this portal um because I, I mean I definitely feel that way as well about the work that I'm I'm doing and I feel like probably a lot of if not most artists feel that way you said the work that you had in Marfa at wrong has kind of like the feel of a woman's body and I don't know if you're familiar much with um, Alexander Hogue uh, he did a lot of Texas landscapes and there were a lot of his where the hills like he explicitly made them look like a woman's body and mm -hmm it's a lot of the scenes are actually, you know, of that area, like the Davis mountains and Big Bend area and all of that. And when you were describing that, that came to mind. And I, I just felt like it was a lovely thread that like, even though I'm sure it was an unintentional, like there's something about that area that does have that feel. 
-hmm. of a woman's bodies and like the rolls and the hills and you know all like the folds all of it you know yeah um so I don't know if you had like if that work that you produced was in any way responsive to the landscape out there but it just has a lovely connection to it even if it wasn't yeah, it was um the work that was out there was made for the space specifically okay. so I had like the space in mind and I had been to Marfa before and um in 2022 I had a show out there at wrong um they're great out there and um yeah it's I had the desert in mind so my color choices didn't change that much but I did feature in one of my portals in Marfa um this like light lime peel green so it's it's very faint but it's like a, a nice green and it reminds me of um of like air plants and everything in the desert mm -hmm. um so I I made this green it just reminds me of the desert like for some reason it's not like a like a true green like a, a lush green it's like more of a muted green yeah um, so I used that in one of my portals and I felt that was like a connection to Marfa itself mm -hmm. so normally like when I'm making my pieces I don't have a space in mind for them I'll just um I'll make my work I'll be asked to uh, be in a show or something and then I'll have or to have a show and um, I just kind of build my show around the work that I already have but with Marfa I made them special for that space yeah. what is your what's your sense of Marfa in general since I you love it there. there yeah I love it there mm -hmm. um it's just like pure beauty the desert the small town it might be like difficult to live there kind of kind of like it's hard to live in Harlingen it's just very it's kind of small you know there's not a whole there's a lot going on in Marfa um there's not a whole lot going on in Harlingen all the time <laughs> but um I I feel like it's a really interesting town like it it doesn't have an HEB or anything which is mm -hmm. weird to me <laughs> they just have like a little grocery store I don't think I could get used to that I think I'm spoiled with HEB yeah um, but the the people there and like the fashion and the way that everybody like presents themselves and carries themselves and the just the smell out there like just the way things look yeah. um everything is just so special it's just of that place you know it's just when you're there you soak it in and you hope to like carry it with you later on but it's yeah. just it's so nice out there so it is um, definitely a like fully immersive experience. yeah and I really appreciate um we talked about this a little bit in my talk with Alan Yu about how because he's a he's a ceramic artist and also a landscape architect and oh, wow. um and I've just been living in sprawl. Like my parents are on the outskirts of San Antonio and like a newer development that they um, they moved into that house like five years ago. And it's just, it's like aesthetically the farthest thing in the world from something that I find like soothing and comforting. And it's, it like does the trick. It's provided me with a home and there's sidewalks to walk on and all of that, you know. But um, also the development is not conscious, you know, it's like they're, they're bulldozing mature oaks and whatnot to like put up these houses and the houses are, you know, again, they're fine. They do the trick, but they, they're, there's some design issues <laughs> in there <laughs> of like, things not really being designed to be functional and thoughtful for both their impact on the land and also how people are going to live and use them. And I just like, I really appreciate the, um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to say this because I know that, that Marfa is actually a very polarizing topic for a lot of people and especially like 
issues, especially around like the Adobe and the, the housing prices and all of that. So I just want to like acknowledge that from the get go, but um, which coincidentally is the name of the little grocery store there. The yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did not do that on purpose. Um, <laughs> but there's an element to it that's like very deliberate and very conscious about the space and the environment that you're in and an awareness that um that those things have an effect on your uh on your psyche you know and like your emotional and mental well-being and just like how it feels to be in the space so like when we're saying that it's like a fully immersive experience it 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 is it's just it's about that feeling of being in in the space of the town but then all of the little individual spots within that town um, and I really I, I think that's a it's rare to find a whole community that is focused on that you know um and and definitely there's like special circumstances um with the fact that Judd kind of set the tone for that. Um, and that the town was already super cute and had this like really cool architecture going on, you know? So, um, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> Can't wait to go back. Is there anything that you want to talk about as far as your work goes or what you're doing that, you know, want to make sure that it gets out there? And No, I'm just, this has been great. Um, I just, I'm making work currently that's a little different from what I've been doing. So it's a little reminiscent of my work when I first started tufting. Mm -hmm. um, when I was really experimenting and each piece was different, I'm kind of revisiting some older ideas and um, I'm really excited to um, share that in the future once I complete like a full body of work because right now I have a whole body of work of bursts and portals mm -hmm. and small bursts and I have like a, a body of weavings and I've got some soft sculpture that's a little on the smaller side, um, but I just, I'm out here making, we're in the Rio Grande Valley making stuff. <laughs> what is the the scene like in Harlingen? Is there much going on there besides what you guys are doing or? Yeah, it's really cute. There's um, Harlingen Art Night, which is tonight, like I said earlier. Mm -hmm. um, they have... The organization Harlingen Art Night has like street vendors. So artists, local artists can sign up and become a vendor for like $5. I think it's very affordable. Um, and you get to vend on the street from, I think you set up around six and then you pack up around nine, 9.30 maybe. Um, we stay open till 10, just we get like the people who come after the street markets over um but there's there are a couple other like art spots there's cactus valley which i actually haven't been to yet um but it's like a it's a gallery and um and art shop like uh they have original artwork and they have art supplies too which is mm. interesting so we have like a little community of of people who are um who center themselves around art like I feel like my husband and I are, are really serious about it. Um, we've made it like our whole lives. Um, when we when we reconnected before we got together, he asked me like, "What was the most important thing in my life?" And I told him art. And he was like, "Okay, then we can make this work," you know. Cool. <laughs> so we both have that as a priority. So we, um, like Harlan Jim, we we've been trying for 10 years to make it like an art scene. And I feel like it's finally like an art scene, you know, people come from McAllen, people come from Brownsville to our openings. So it's, it's really exciting. It, 
kind of brings the valley together, yeah. which is really nice. I have a friend who grew up there and she hasn't, she has lived in California now for like 20 years. So um, I'm sure that it has changed quite a lot from mm-hmm. when she was there, but the stories that she would share and just the general sense that I always got was how, um, you know, I don't know if those towns are really closely knit or if it's more of just that it is a region unto itself. Like it's part of Texas, but it's also the Valley. And there's like a whole set of um, cultural characteristics, I guess is what I would call it. That's very specific and unique to that area. Absolutely. Um, and that I think that we can sort of try to understand as people who don't live there, but you can't really understand it, you know, fully. Um, and it's also very politically charged, especially right now. And then I know I'm kind of going like totally off our topic here, <laughs> but that's how my brain works. This um, is where I live. Let's yeah, talk about um, <laughs> with SpaceX moving yeah, down here near Brownsville. Like, possible. yeah, that it's has, really close. Um, it's made an impact. It makes an impact on our community. Um, you know, Elon got like tax breaks and everything, and is granted all these permissions to to do things to our land down here that like the people didn't agree to you know so it's right. really there's um there are a lot of people who are like not really excited about SpaceX being down here you know because it's kind of destroying our habitats and yes. yeah um, and and forcing people like a whole small town of people to have to yeah. make um, well he tried to Elon Musk tried to have these people all move yeah it wasn't offering them like yeah a new life somewhere else he was just like hey get out of my get out of your homes you know (laughs) i'm gonna be launching rockets here now so yeah it's like like, he's such a just weird person personality character in the the force of impact that he's had on, on not just like South Texas, but Texas, but like the whole world and humanity yeah, is just a, like, it's a little crazy. Yeah. Um, at, but I get, sometimes I get really um, struck by the, the disparity between this, this so-called like, uh, progressive environmental like parts of what he's trying to do on one level in terms of like solar and I mean you know you can have a a lot of arguments about like what he's contributed to space exploration and like all of that what that contributes to humanity and um and then how just completely uh, irresponsible on so many levels about the impacts that he has on communities and people's lives and the welfare of the environment and the animals and the plants and the water and like all of it. It's just like, it makes no sense when you, if you think of it like, on the surface like we're talking about solar and this and that and like it's all like um this very idealistic mission but it's not playing out that way you know um and he has the power to do that because of his immense wealth you know um but I, I mean, the te- there's the, the Tesla uh, factory that's kind of like east of Austin now that has completely transformed, you know, like already there was light pollution from the cities, but like those little towns around there, just like um, 
I follow a lot of uh, local farmers and stuff. Like I really, I like going to farmers markets and things like that. And there's one called um, Tecolati, um that is east of Austin. And they posted some before and after photos of their skyline at night. And the first one, like you could totally see stars, you know, and the second one, it was just like this bright, 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 bright glow from the Tesla factories. And, um, and I know like light pollution seems like a, a minor thing to a lot of people, but it's kind of like, it's one of my little things that I'm very passionate about. And I think is um, underrated on its impact in our biosphere and its impact on wildlife and all of that. And then just, there's a lot to it, but it's just like it, um, I'm totally up on a soapbox. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that, no, <laughs> to do that but like, um, you know, it's just like creating, he has the capacity to help shape the future that we create for ourselves on this planet and on other planets. And yet he's like totally trashing this one. And it, it just seems like if you're going to go for this, like idealistic future, um, where we have like renewable, sustainable lifestyles, um, regenerative lifestyles, like you got to start by like, this is the perfect testing ground here on this planet before we go try and do that somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I don't know. A lot of it's strong feelings there, obviously. <laughs> yeah. From a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of activists down here that are very much against it. So I, I follow them and I see like what they go through and I see the impact that it has on our community. And it's just wild that um, in the year 2024, <laughs> we are dealing with this kind of stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Some guy the other day was driving a cyber truck with... Um, with a giant Elon Musk bust, like a brass bust. Yeah, I read about that. Did you see that? Yeah, I've seen there pictures was, of it. Was, um, yeah, it was. It started popping up on my social media because I follow so many people who live in Brownsville, just mm -hmm. because we're like we're really close. You know, we're twenty miles away. Um, but somebody was actually like driving that around, and I think they took it to South Padre Island, which <laughs> it just made me chuckle because it seems yeah. so silly it's like weird <laughs> yeah he's quite the persona yeah those cyber trucks are like around austin san antonio and i assume because of the proximity of the the tesla plants they're like they're just everywhere like i see them daily to the point where i don't even really notice them anymore like just i this this week i noticed that I drove by two of them and I didn't even, it didn't even register until I was passing them. And I was like, oh, that I'm already like dismissing them as just like part of the environment, you know? Oh, yeah. um, there's a part of me that is like, that's a healthy outlet for the audacity of Elon Musk, you know, like those side tracks are, are pretty <laughs> silly in a lot of ways, but um, also, are they really hurting people? I don't know, but they're definitely not like in the way that a lot of the other things that he's doing. And then there's also a part of me that is like, if you were able to go back in time and talk to, to like 1984 Lisa and show her a picture of like, this is what a truck looks like in 2024. I would just be like, oh yeah, that completely registers with my impression of what the future is going to be like, <laughs> you know? So um, there's a little bit of like a RoboCop feel to them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or the Simpsons. The future right. is now, old man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This was really lovely. Yeah. It, was, it was great talking to you. I think it like, Part, part of my goal with this, I mean, really most of my goal with this was just sort of 
having the opportunity to talk in depth with other artists and people who are doing things that I like what they're doing. And so I appreciate you taking the time and getting to know you about it a little better. <laughs>